Basketball Wives Orlando. I feel like I haven't did one of these in a while, child. I got to look and I was like, I need to do my review. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to be reviewing two episodes. Um, episode whatever and whatever. The child, they'll be right here in the the title, child. But yeah, we need to talk about the girls. Um, ain't nobody get along, pretty much. Friends is falling out. There was friends before. It's a mess. Mm, mm, mm. So, um... Okay, so the first thing, I'm just going to talk about the important things in these past two episodes. So, you know, last we left off, you know, Morgan was trying to grab Ashley real quick. Like, she'd been trying to grab Ashley since the show began. Um, but, you know, we was at the sleepover. That um, who, who hosted the sleepover? Was it Nikki? I think it was Nikki that hosted the sleepover. But anyway, um, so... Um, they had, you know, ain't been too long, got into that real bad argument. Morgan and Danielle was escorted out. Okay, so we see Mackenzie and Ashley talking about the whole thing that happened. Um, Mackenzie asked Ashley, well, how do you think Morgan's bo baby daddy got the number? Got her address? Because Morgan don't want her baby daddy to know where he stay, where she stays. Um, because she has been taking care of her kids for years now, and he has never tried to reach out, but he getting tired of paying child support, or the child support payments have increased on what he need to pay. So now he want to reach out and bother her. Such a shame. It, it's just some men are great, 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 great people. Um, so yeah, she just didn't want him to know where she stayed for obvious reasons, right? And we don't know, you know, what's going on up there as far as with the man. So. Yeah, so Morgan, she had to end up moving um, to another place and her kid, her mom had her kids for a while until she get like everything situated with that. So anyway, Mackenzie and Ashley talking and she was like, well, how'd she get the number? Now, Morgan's whole thing is she's been mad at Ashley this whole time because Ashley is still in communication with her baby daddy. Um, and also she, she says that Ashley fed women to her baby daddy like she was like the wing girl i guess and um was feeding women around to him and um i guess other players or whatever ashley has denied it but um yeah so i mean i don't know that like i said all the fighting that morgan be trying to do with ashley is pointless um a, because Ashley is not admitting fully to what you're claiming her to. B, she's not a fighter, clearly. Ashley is a little bitty tiny girl. Um, and C, it's just like, girl, eventually you're going to catch a charge and get put off the show. Or both. You know? And it's just... Um, there just has to be a way for you to calm down, Morgan. I feel like maybe she's starting to realize that. But, um... Hopefully. Because I really like Morgan. I do. Um, so, they was talking and um, Ashley said, well, you know what? If I really wanted to find somebody and if I had money, I would hire a private investigator and stuff. And that's how I would do. And I didn't know that she didn't want nobody to know where she stayed at. So, that kind of made me go, what? So, did you do it? Did you play a part in it? Is there a reason... Morgan's anger towards you is it is it uh validated sis like is is it um you know what's the word I'm looking for is it not understandable uh is it y'all help me out what word I'm looking for I guess is it okay but it was a particular word I was listening for um that I was thinking about is it, um, I guess, accurate or whatever. But um, justified, I think. Yeah, justified is what I'm looking for. Um, is it justified the way that Morgan's been treating you, Ashley? And Ashley pretty much confirmed something. I don't think she necessarily confirmed it, but she's just like, I didn't know, I didn't know. So, Ashley, you did it, right? I don't know. Am I the only one that watched the show that was confused in that moment? Mackenzie was just like, look, me and Ashley cool, but that don't mean I'm cool with everything she do. Like, I wouldn't have did nothing like that. So, I mean, whatever. Um, 
so Megan, she meets up with Mackenzie and um, they're talking and Megan is feeling some kind of way about Ashley as well because um, there was apparently a girl on Instagram who kept asking, um, who is this watching your videos? I guess Ashley was doing whatever. And then she was just like, oh, well, that's um, Danielle's friend. Megan was feeling some kind of way about that. It was just like, why can't you just say, oh, I don't know her or oh, she's such and such. Like, I'm not just like, you know, Danielle's friend and and stuff. And so, um, you know, basically to disregard and, and say, oh, you're on that team and I don't fool with that girl and, and blah, blah, blah. So, no, she said Morgan's friend, Morgan's friend. Same thing, child. Morgan and Danielle. Um, okay, so, also in the episode, they had this big um, breast uh, cancer event where they was basically, they took a couple of ladies and put wigs on them. You know, uh, Morgan, she has her own hairline. And um, Nikki, she makes wigs and stuff. And so, Nikki and Ashley came together for that whole thing. It was nice what they did for the ladies. But of course, once the ladies left, um, that's when things hit the fan, right? Mulan heard that Megan been talking about her. So Mulan asked Megan, do you think I'm a good friend? And Megan said, no, because you go around and you talk crap about everybody and their mama. And you know you do. Um, and so it just started. They started to throw shots back and forth. Um, at one point, Danielle jumped in it and she was just like, Neek. Because Nick and Milan has been real cool lately. She was like, Nick, I know stuff about you that I shouldn't know because your best friend told me. And Danielle revealed in front of Nick and to Milan and everybody else what she knew about Nick and her relationship with her man. Um, and so Nick's feelings was hurt, you know, and stuff by that. So I was like, child. Mm -mm. Okay, let me see. So, um, after that, they ended up getting into it. Nikki ended up jumping in it. Um, you know, it just got real ugly. They escorted Mulan out. Um, I don't know if she suited up or she had a sword. I don't know, but they escorted Mulan out. Um, so the next thing we see is Mulan fake running down the street to go and talk to Mackenzie. And they're talking and Mackenzie says that, oh, Megan's so fake and she does this and she does that. Like, she's so incredibly phony. Um, things that Mackenzie would never say to Megan's face. Um, and she was just like, yeah, I agree. And then uh, Milan was just like, yeah, the truth will come to light. I said, child. Let me see. Okay, so we get to the more recent episode. Um, one of the activities the ladies participated in was speed dating and that was Nikki, Danielle and Morgan and it looks fun speed dating just look fun in general I would love to go um let me see so yeah they were talking to a couple of guys and they was there you know it was a cute little scene I thought they all looked great child Danielle Danielle got her a little chocolate drop child looking like Kurt Rashida's husband a little bit you know younger and stuff I was like oh look at Danielle I got her a little chocolate drop I think his name is Mikhail or something I was like well good for you sis and then Mackenzie gonna say in the camera oh well I'm glad Danielle's I'm um, going on dates that way she can stay out of me and Rashad's business girl the whole world getting rid of me and y'all business you have no idea because Rashad is about to take you through it sis Mackenzie, you sit up there thinking you got somebody. That man straight up told you to your face that I'm going to have other women. And you're going to deal with it. Yes, you is. And Mackenzie, I guess in your mind, you think you can change his mind. Or you think you're going to put it so good on him that he just don't need you. And he just going to want to, you know, be in a monogamous, monogamous relationship. No, sis. No matter how good you do what you do. That man, he telling you who he is. Only he can change it. And he don't see no problem with it, obviously. I respect him, at least for being honest up front. Be like, yeah, I'm a cheat. I mean, you know. I mean, Kenzie, she's just so out to prove that she's better than Danielle. She don't even see, she don't even see what she's signing up for. Girl, you signing your rights over. Bless your heart. Heartache and pain. This is my goddaughter. And I'm just trying to protect her heart. You may have been a fool to her, 
But to me she's the star Why, 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 why She was my best friend <laughs> Sisters to the thick and thin And I can't believe it, can't believe it So anyway, um Look Kelly Price for y'all, LeBron Isley. So, um, let's cut to Milan. So Milan, she had um, a BBL and she had um, hydrogel shots, I think that's what she said, in her behind. Um, she got it all done when she was 18, listening to some dude. You know, men are great, right? Um, and she got that done. So Milan's butt is out of control. That's the first thing I noticed. It was just like, what is going on with her tail? You know, well, now I found out that that's what she had done and, and stuff. So I'm no longer going to make fun of her about that because it's actually pretty sad. She went to the doctor. The doctor said because of the hydrogel and all that stuff that's in there, it would actually be super dangerous if we was to do the surgery because it's, it's, it's gel, girl. It's like once you cut it open, it's going to spread all into your bloodstream and there could be a whole nother issue. And she, he was like, um... You know, because of, of it's, it's been so long and because the fact that you specifically used, you know, gel instead of just like an implant in your behind or um, just uh, trans fat, tr fat transfer, that foreign substance, you know, is, is if it leak into your blood screen, that might be a wrap, sis, and go to your organs and stuff. And so it's just a much more serious thing. So I don't know for sure, but I don't think she's going to have the surgery. Now, I think that she thought initially that it was going to be just an easy fit. Um, but it's way more complicated than what she's ever known. So it's actually pretty sad about Milan. Um, but we're going to pray for her for sure. Um, it was cute to see Ashley and her husband. You know, her husband has autism. And their kids have autism, at least one of them for sure. And um, he did not find out he had autism until he was um, like 30 or, or older. So um, they were talking, Ashley and the husband, and he's getting ready to talk about it, you know, on wherever. Um, to talk about his his um, road to, to fame in the NBA and all that stuff. It's nice to see them as a couple. I do like Ashley and her husband as a couple. You know, Ashley's my heart. I don't particularly like Ashley personality wise, but my heart do go out to Ashley. I do just want to hug her. Um, as tough as she is, um, she's definitely uh, fragile at the same time. Um, and if she allows you to go in, like I can see the the like sadness in her eyes. You know, she lost her mom to cancer. She lost her dad first and she lost her mom. Then they had a Miss Carrie. So Ashley's just been through a lot in a um, short amount of time. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see how she is next season, if she's there next season, to see if her her outlook um, would be would be different. Would be different. OK, uh, let me see. Let me see. So Megan, Megan has a podcast, y'all. And um, Megan also has a YouTube channel and. Yeah, so anyway, Megan and these two girls that has their own podcast, which is talking about Bex. Um, you know, they want to combine their platforms, Megan and the two girls. And um, they just want to talk about Bex and different unique things, etc. So one of the guests, well, the guest they ended up having was Four from Black Ink Crew Chicago. Y'all know he done been into some things. Legs behind the ankles, you know. And um, they wanted to talk to him, up, you know, about who he is now and how he got into BDSM, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so, yeah, they did that. Uh, Megan had on a little leather dress. I don't know. If, I think it was leather, but it was black and it was too tight. But she looked cute. Um for well, those that don't know, Nikki on this cast used to go with four back in the day on Chicago when she was in her 20s. She was smaller and she was feistier, for sure. Nikki used to beat a lot of the girls up, for sure. Um, 
I'm not really sure how Nikki and Four broke up. I think they just they just kind of went their separate ways. But um, yeah, so it, it was so funny because Mulan pointed it out. She was just like, "We have Little Red Riding Hood in the audience," um, which is based on how Nikki was dressed. And then um, she said, "We had the big bad wolf in Four and stuff." Um, you know, Four is super open about who he is and his Beck's duality and stuff. Um, Y'all know YouTube, so I can't say certain stuff. Um, So, you know, he's super open about it. He talked about getting his um, cash, cash, you know, um, devour <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. Um, You know, the girls in the audience was disgusted. The audience just couldn't believe it. You know, this big black man talking like this and saying this kind of stuff is it's still taboo to this day um and i'm proud of for for being open and um being who he is unapologetically because it's not hard walking around uh black and being anything other than straight and for says that he identifies as himself so he don't have a you know We'll see what it gives. I mean, Janelle Monae was an android before she came out as a Cresbian, a, a lesbianist. Um, so, I mean, we're going to see what um, four turn into. Well, I was, by the way, you know, before I came into my own, I was, you know, a bye. Ladies, how y'all feel about that? Y'all want a bite of the chalky? Anyway, um, as long as we can both wear a dress on the wedding day, then I feel like we we would get along, ladies. So we'll be fine. Okay? So, um, yeah, that was, um, and all the ladies in the audience is, is um, acting a fool, finna throw up, acting a fool. I was just like, you know, it's still so taboo for, for, you know, being black and, and bay and stuff um, in the black community. It still is. It's still things that it's, it's conversations that people are uncomfortable with and or and or don't know about um, and or just don't understand. And so it's just a lot of breaking. It's just a lot um, with the people um, for sure. But it's, it's that double standard that women are able to be explorative in that way, but not men. Um, and then so, um, we're kind of somewhat getting out of that mindset, um, slowly, the slowest process, but yeah, um, it, it was the full. Now, Nikki's feeling some kind of way about Megan because she feel like Megan set her up. Megan could have let her know that four was coming. Yes, Megan could have let her know that four was coming. Um, Nikki at one point was on Megan's podcast and she was talking about four. And so now when she sit back and think about it, she feels like Megan was just taking notes that she was trying to undermine Nikki and embarrass her um, by having him on the show, which it definitely looks like that. It, now it, because at first I was like, well, Megan don't owe Nikki nothing. And then this is a business deal. And then I just don't think that she cares enough to bring four on just to irritate Brit Nikki. And they ain't been together in years. Like, it's, no. Um, but now knowing that Nikki was on Megan's separate podcast by herself, talking about four, and now all of a sudden here's four. I mean, you would think that would be something that Megan disclosed to her, to Nikki. But at the end of the day, playing devil's advocate, she didn't owe Nikki that. You see, it would have just been nice to extend courtesy to Nikki. Be like, yo, four is coming on the on the platform, you know, but I don't think she's a bad person for not telling Nikki that. Does that make sense? I hope so, y'all. Let me see. Anything else happen? Lindsay, child. Lindsay, why you keep showing up? Lindsay, darn near. Now months pregnant and still showing up to these parties that can go left and people can fight at any moment. I said, Lindsay, girl, go sit down. 
It's it's weird knowing that if God forbid if somebody accidentally push you over hit you uh oh because you don't have a pregnant one sitting here around in this fool she's in this club girl go home find that husband child he overseas telling you he might he gonna see if he can come down for the childbirth I said what yo child you gonna see if you can make it if you can fit it in your schedule that's crazy hmm. Oh, uh, let me see. What else is going on? Y'all, I think that's it. Uh, Basketball Wives Orlando is the ish. I enjoy it. I do. With that said, I'm Mr. Chalaki. Mr. Chalaki on Google Plus. Follow me at Excuse My Instagram and Twitter at Excuse My on Snapchat. Chess King on Facebook. Mr. Chalaki on Cash Out, PayPal, and TikTok. And as always, Run me my money or run me my fade. Run me my money the way I get paid. Stay black, stay tuned. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.